Uh, the Lord saved me. And I hope you can say the same thing. Uh, but if you've never been saved today, today, what a day that it would be to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Uh, but number two, that you can lead somebody to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that's why sometimes we just need to be reminded of simple things. Just like John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's our job anyway. That's our job as Christians. Amen. Uh, this, uh, the community around about us, where you live, where I live, there's multitudes of lost folks. And uh, as Brother Greg was praying, as he said, to be alive to a lost and a dying world. And I believe that's what Jesus wants us to be. John chapter number 3, verse number 1, let's get into this. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The son came to Jesus by night, said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, that's significant. That Jesus will say that to him uh, probably three different times through his passion. But he just made a compliment to the Lord Jesus Christ. He, he said, uh, These miracles thou doest no, uh, except God, no man can do them except God be with him in Jesus. Uh, didn't even acknowledge what Nicodemus said. He just caught him off guard. I say to thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the, the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And, and remember, this was a new concept. Jesus is bringing, uh, you must be born again to the world right here. Jesus answering, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it is. And thou hearest the sound thereof, and canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we know, and testify that we have seen. And ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man has received up to the heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Uh, and that's Jesus there prophesied for death that he would die, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God has sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believes upon him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that life is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because for these reasons. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be approved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are lost in God's Father in Jesus' name. Thank you for the reading of the precious word today. We pray, God, that this should touch us today, God. We pray, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to bless us here today, God. And Lord, what you do for us, we'll thank you and we'll praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.
our subject here today, of course, hindrance types of the scripture, is the subject of salvation and the new birth and being born again. And Jesus here is bringing a concept. Uh, you have to understand uh, that Nicodemus has been raised as a Jew. He's still uh, schooled under the law. And Jesus has just said to him, he must be born again. It's the new birth. And it is salvation. And that's what Jesus is saying here. The key verse of this page of the Scripture is verse number 3. Verily, verily, I say to thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Uh, and uh, he said in the Gospels, I want to say this just by way of introduction. In the book of Matthew, Jesus is revealed as the branch of David. In the book of Mark, he's Jehovah's servant. In the book of Luke, he's revealed as the human divine one. Uh, Lord willing, we'll touch on that a little bit next Sunday. He's the one who came to seek to save that which was lost. He's the one that's cursed with the feeling of your infirmity. But here in John, John has a unique look at the Lord Jesus Christ as the human divine one. And uh, John, uh, writing this book, I want to say this. Uh, John, he discloses Jesus' his identity with his very first words of this book. He said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word praised God. Hallelujah, the Word was God. The rest of the book, it follows that theme. I want to say this also by way of introduction. Uh, that the book of John uh, is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ written by John. He was John the Lord. Uh, John, this great man, this, this disciple of the Lord, he's the one that laid his head over on Jesus' book. Uh, I imagine sometimes that John, uh, what it would have been like for him to have heard the actual heartbeat of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he laid his head over on the bosom of the Lord. And uh, he had a very uh, a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he presents Jesus as the Christ, uh, 100% God and 100% man. Now, one writer said that uh, the only 200% man uh, that ever will, praise God. Uh, boy, I'm hallelujah. Boy, I'm glad today, church, that I'm serving a God like that. Amen. Amen. That I'm serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, that came, praise God. Uh, he came through uh, at the womb of a virgin. Amen. Uh, he lived a sinless life uh, and died a sacrificial death uh, on the cross of Calvary uh, uh, to save me from my sin right. and to save you from your sin. Praise God. Uh, and, and, and praise God. I love this time of year. Christmas is my favorite. I love studying about and reading about and seeing the Christmas plays about the baby, about baby Jesus. I, I got to, I'll say this, and then we'll move on. I, I got to, I, there's a Christmas movie that I watch every single year. It, it's called uh, uh, The Nativity School. And uh, uh, it's, uh, it, it's a wonderful movie. I watch it every year. The Nativity Story. Uh, I was trying to remember. I can't remember who was in it, so you could look it up. Um, but anyway, <coughs> this, this this story is so wonderful. It's so touching. How that God was turned up to send a Savior. But I said all that to say this. I love Christmas. I love baby Jesus in the mind. But praise God, he had a purpose. Amen. Yeah. Just as you said earlier. He had a purpose on this world to come into this world. And uh, he will. That sin was life. He administered those three years. But his face was set like a flint, flint the prophet said, toward the cross of Calvary. But praise God, we got a redeemed, a, a redeemed Savior this morning. Right. They redeemed us from our sins. Right. Uh, because when he died there on the cross, <laughs> he said, Father, he sinned. Three days later, he ascended. He arose from the grave and he ascended to the Father. 
Praise God to make our redemption. He was 100% God. Uh, yeah, he was 100% man. What about to say this? All right. Jesus didn't come to sow a new patch on an old garment. He came wearing a robe of righteousness. Right. And his righteousness is for whosoever will. Right. Praise God, we read it this morning. John 3, 16. Hallelujah. I for God so well the world at whosoever. Well, I like those bumpers. I don't like bumper stickers, but I like to see those that said I'm a whosoever. Yeah. Now, I'm a whosoever person this morning. I'm glad that Jesus came. And that uh, you're a whosoever this morning too. Mm -hmm. uh, and John, as I said, he revealed that Jesus is a deity in every chapter of this book. And I want to say this to you. His true identity is revealed through the titles that he has given in the book of John. And uh, one of them is the Word, uh, the only begotten Son of God. Uh, the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. And uh, John the Baptist said, Behold, uh, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Uh, and uh, the, one, another title, and another deity uh, title given to him is the Son of God. Uh, the true uh, bread. Amen. Uh, uh, he didn't come just to feel sunny. Uh, he came to save souls. Uh, he's the Son of God. He's the true bread. He's the resurrection and the life and the true vine. Uh, but you will also find uh, here in the book of John the great I Am statement that Jesus uses to affirm his pre-existence as eternal being. That's what the I Am, the I Am statements do. I Am, he said, uh, uh, the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the gold. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. And the greatest sign of all is the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. In which, in the book of John, he shows himself seven times to the apostles. I have proved. Praise God, he is resurrection. Hallelujah. I want a Savior that we have here in the book of John. And it's written, listen, to show uh, the necessity of the new birth. That's what we're studying here today. The necessity of the new birth. Ye must be born again. He says it in verse number three, and he says it again in verse number seven, so certain. Uh, and that is the most important. Uh, the most important thing that you can know, just as we sang in that song, when it comes time to go, is that you've been born again. That you have been born again. That you have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. That is so important. I wrote this down. I like this. Man without God is nothing. But God without man is still God. Mm -hmm. And uh, with Jesus Christ, we have everything that we need. Amen. I've got three points this morning. Number one, the carnality of man. Uh, number two, the creation of the new birth. And number three, the continuation of the soul. The carnality of man. Carnality simply means the fleshly lust of the desires or indulgence of these lusts, the sensuality and grossness of the mind or desire, the love of sensual pleasure. We're talking about the carnality of man. You see, before a, a man or a woman can be saved, they have to understand that, that they are all. In First John chapter two and verse number sixteen, the Bible says, "For all that is in the world." The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. Uh, there is a spiritual warfare today for the soul of man. And uh, the devil, he is a great deceiver. He has deceived so many people. 
and uh, pulls them in through the lust of the flesh, through the lust of the eyes, through the pride of life. God, as a matter of fact, said in his word that uh, he hated pride. And there is that warfare between the flesh and the spirit. Uh, you Certainly, you feel that as a Christian. I feel that, <coughs> certainly, as a Christian. That warfare between the flesh and the spirit, the spirit man, the things that uh, the Apostle Paul said, that that I would do, I do not. Uh, he had a great desire. Uh, but uh, this old flesh, can I tell you your soul is saved? But this old flesh, this flesh has never been saved. Yeah. Uh, it's, still, it's still just old corrupt flesh. Uh, but one day, praise God, our redemption will be complete. But let me give you this. How to uh, com- combat carnality. Uh, and, and I'm glad that God gave us his word. And uh, as a Christian, you can combat uh, carnality. And in Galatians chapter 5, in verse number 16, the Bible says, uh, This I say, again, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not uh, fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's uh, very important for us as Christians. Uh, now, the carnality of man. Number one, the condition of a sinful man. I want you to know this verse number one. Uh, the first four words of this uh, verse says, There was a man. There was a man. Let's notice this man. This man, the Bible says, uh, was of the Pharisee. <coughs> he was. He had a religious background. He was a Pharisee. Let's see what Jesus said to him. Uh, Jesus said in verse number three, "Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God." In verse number five, he said, "Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God." That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. And uh, what Jesus is telling this religious man is uh, there's a necessity for the new birth. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. It's regeneration. I like what the footnote of my Bible says. The necessity of the new birth grows out of the incapacity of the natural man to see or enter into the kingdom of God. However gifted, moral, or divine, the natural man is absolutely blind to spiritual truth and impotent to enter the kingdom. For he can neither obey, understand, nor please God. How is that? How is that? Well, uh, he says here uh, that uh, the new birth is not a reformation of the old nature but a uh, new birth, praise God. That's what it is. Uh, it's a new birth. Uh, Revelation 21, 27 says, And there shall, he's talking about the new Jerusalem, and no life enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever works the abomination nor maketh a lie, but they that are written in the Lamb's book of life, praise God. Uh, when you were born again, uh, your name was written in the Lamb's book of life. Praise God. But there is that condition of that sinful man. He was a Pharisee. Number two, he was a ruler. <coughs> the Bible says he was a uh, ruler of the Jews. He was a leader. Uh, his very name means conqueror. And he was no doubt of the Sanhedrin court. Uh, and uh, we've already uh, went through that footnote there in my Bible, but these verses come to mind when we're talking about uh, that uh, regeneration or that new birth uh, that uh, uh, that a man or a woman has to have to please God. Listen to these scriptures. Psalm 61 5 says, Behold, I was shaken and shaken in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Jeremiah 17 9, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And in Mark chapter number 7, verse 21 through 23, For from within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, and murders, self, covetous, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, 
pride and foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. 1 Corinthians 2 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 7, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed it can be. That's why Nicodemus could not understand what the Lord Jesus Christ was talking about. When Jesus said, Ye must be born again. Nicodemus said, how can, they, uh, uh, how can a man be born when he was old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb? The carnality of man. That was the condition of sinful man. Uh, but in verse number two, we're going to notice the conviction of sinful man. He came to Jesus by night. Uh, in John 14, in chapter number six, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And uh, Nicodemus was coming to the Lord. I don't know what Nicodemus' uh, uh, motive was for coming to the Lord Jesus Christ or coming to him that night. I could only speculate. Uh, but I believe he wanted something from the Lord. Amen. He wanted, uh, uh, he wanted to talk to Jesus. He had heard about Jesus. <coughs> And uh, he wanted to understand something about the Lord. Heard that conviction of uh, the sinful man. A recognition of uh, who man is. Romans chapter number 3 and verse number 23. For all have sinned that come short of the glory of God. Uh, Nicodemus said unto Jesus uh, in verse number 2. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. So Nicodemus knew enough to know uh, that God was uh, with Jesus. And he's trying to find out who Jesus really is. Well, I'm glad for the day. I praise God when I wanted to find out who Jesus really was. When I came to Jesus, just as Nicodemus did. The conviction of sin for man. The recognition of who Christ really is, and the conscience of sinful man. Man has a conscience. We know that man has a conscience. That's the way God has <coughs> made it. Uh, the, uh, the carnality of man, to be saved, first of all, you have to understand that you in a lost condition. Number two, the creation of the new birth. Uh, we'll see that in verses number three through eight. Uh, and then I say this in reference to that. In Second Corinthians chapter five and verse number seventeen, uh, wherefore if any man be in Christ, he's a new priest. Uh, all things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. You see, I believe, I really believe that Nicodemus got saved. Uh, I, I really do. If you read on through the book, uh, you know, reference Nicodemus on over there coming with the disciples after uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is crucified. And uh, so I believe that Nicodemus, I believe that he became, got part in that new birth. And uh, as I studied this, and I thought about the new birth, uh, three things came to my mind. <clears throat> Number one, the wonder of birth. The wonder of birth. When an infant is born, I thought, I thought about, it's been a long time since my youngest was born. I mean, it ain't been too long since these babies were born. Especially this little new one right here. Yeah, she was just born uh, just a few months ago. Uh, when was it in March, April? May. Oh, praise God. Bless your little heart. Now, this little young one, what I want to tell you is this little child, now, he was just born in May. And uh, I want to tell you, as a child of God, when you become born again, and Jesus forgives you for your sins, don't you get a hold of it? That baby, when it was born, it ain't got no life. But it's like, I want to the future. Mm -hmm. When she was born, you realize when you become born again, 
Jesus took your sins. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He took your sins away. Uh, it, as a matter of fact, don't the Bible say that he cast them as far as uh, the east is yeah. the west? Yeah. And he cast them in, praise God, to the sea of forgiveness. Yeah. Hallelujah for that today. That Jesus took our sins. And uh, we no longer have a time. Mm-hmm. Praise God, all we have, church, we have a future. Amen. Oh, praise God, we have a future today. We have a great future in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that baby that came in that baby, praise God, that grew up, that brought redemption for all mankind. Hallelujah. And that bore our sins on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus, uh, that we, when we become born again, and we pray from death unto life, uh, that uh, all those ugly old sins, praise God, are cast away, and we only have a future. Hallelujah. Boy, I'm glad for that today. Amen. I'm glad I believe that today. And I wouldn't say that if I didn't believe it's the book. Mm-hmm. Amen. I believe that's what the Bible teaches. The wonder of the new birth. Boy, I bet Nicodemus went away to Georgia. And uh, there's the wonder of the new birth. Jesus answered in verse number 5, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Notice this, except a man be born of water uh, and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. <coughs> the water. Uh, for a birth, there has to be water. Praise God, and that water uh, in the Scriptures is representative of all the Word of God. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Do you know how to exercise faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? Or how to become a born-again Christian? It's here in the Word. Just a simple message of salvation. Yeah. If you think back, maybe, to the time you got saved, whenever it was, you heard a message of salvation. Somebody told you about Jesus. And uh, you realized that you needed Him in your heart. Praise God, the water of the Word. Faith comes out here in Hearing by the word of God. Now, Peter said in 1 Peter 1 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Hallelujah. And then there in verse number 5, also, uh, we not only see the water of the word, which is the word, but we see the wind of the word. That is the Holy Spirit there. Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. Praise God. At the wind of the new birth. Romans 8, chapter 5 says this. For they that are uh, after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so... That be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of you. But I'm glad for that Spirit. I praise God, brother Lord, that God imparts to us when we become born again. Praise God. Now, I want to say this uh, before we move on. I will preach him with faith. When God saved us, He knows after He saved us, we're going to mess up. Amen. And, and I honestly believe uh, that when the Lord saves you, He forgives you not only for your past sins you don't have a past, but He forgives you for your present and your future sins too. Amen. He made you a new creation in Christ. Your soul is sealed, as the Bible tells us, until the day of redemption. Praise God. And uh, one of these days, uh, when Jesus comes back, that redemption will be complete. Uh, and He'll stop off in the earth. Praise God, and uh, those uh, that have went on, he'll call them out. The dead in Christ shall die the church. Yeah. And then those of us which are alive and remain shall be called up. Yeah. Boy, at that time, hallelujah, that uh, we'll go on our redemption will be complete. I hope you're at that point today. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. For, uh, we saw the carnality of man. The creation of the new birth. Uh, but our third and final point. And probably the most important. It's all important, but this is the most sobering, I should say. The most sobering thought. 
is the continuation of the soul. The continuation of the soul. Can I tell you the soul never dies? The soul never dies. Yeah. Uh, it'll go to heaven or it'll go to hell. Yeah. Uh, there's no, uh, that, that, that's just, that's the way God set it up. And uh, there's a continuation of the soul. The soul of man never dies. There's heaven and there's hell. Uh, verse number 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him, listen to this, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life. That should not perish. Praise God. Why I'm glad for that today. Now, I will say this. Uh, Nicodemus had to make a conscientious decision. Uh, to, to accept Jesus Christ. This is you and I do. Verse number 19 tells us, He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he have not believed in the name of his only begotten Son of God. There's only one. There's only one Jesus. There's only one begotten Son. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I want to say this is what and I'm going to say this word on verse number 14 in quotes. I have to hear my notes. This is important. I believe, I'm going to say this. I believe when we come to church, if we can pick up another, I was thinking about this the other day. If we can pick up another, get a fruit out of the Word of God to take with us back out into the world, I believe it's worth coming out to the house of God. And uh, I understand, Brother Long, uh, that uh, I, we can't, I ain't always up here spiritually. Mm -hmm. I, I ain't always running the benches and walking, running the aisles. Amen. I like it when that happens. Uh, but praise God, when we come into the house of God, if we can take these precious words, and I was thinking about somebody maybe uh, prospecting for gold. Now, if I went down to the creek, and uh, I probably wouldn't be expecting to get 10 pounds of gold in my, in my gold bank. But if I found a little nugget, well, God, I'd be happy, amen? Mm -hmm. I believe I would. If I found a nugget of gold out here in the tree, I believe I'd be tickled to death. And uh, when I, my goal when I preach, I want us to get a nugget of truth out of the Word of God. I want us to get something that will help us in the coming weeks out of the Word of God. And uh, to glorify Jesus, most of all. I want to glorify His holy name. But notice here in verse number 14, and we'll close like to this. <laughs> and this is words written in Laban. This is what Jesus is saying unto Nicodemus. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And, and I want you to understand this. When Jesus was speaking these words, he was talking to a man that was a Pharisee. Right. Nicodemus understood Moses. Mm -hmm. He understood the law. As a matter of fact, to be a Pharisee and to be in the Sanhedrin courts, you had to have it memorized. You had to have all that stuff memorized. And he knew. And that Jesus is talking to these Jews. And he's explaining it to them in a way that they can understand. They know all about Moses lifting up the serpent in the wilderness. But he says something here. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now I want to give you this. Uh, in studying Moses and Christ, uh, there are many comparisons that we can use uh, in the life of Moses and in the life of Christ. But there's one contrast. Listen to this. Moses, in his offices, was a prophet. He was a priest and he was a servant. He was a shepherd. He was a mediator and a deliverer. In his character, he was meek, faithful, and obedient, and mighty in word and deed. In his history, Moses was a son of Egypt. 
and danger of being killed, but God cared for him. Uh, and that's just like Christ. If we study Christ's life. He chose to suffer affliction. He was rejected of his own the first time and received the second time. But while rejected, he received the Gentile bride. I praise God. Uh, that's just like Jesus. Amen. Uh, Jesus was rejected of his own the first time. And he received the Gentile bride. Praise God. That's us. That's the church. I uh, praise God. Hallelujah. <coughs> now, Moses, uh, uh, Moses condemned Egypt. Christ condemned the world. Moses delivered God's people through the blood. Christ delivered God's people on the cross. Moses led the people, fed the people, carried the people's burdens, and was a mediator between God and man. The contrast is that Moses didn't lead him into the promised land. Moses didn't go into the promised land. He couldn't make it. Praise God, he made a mistake for the grave. God let him go up on the mountain. Sometimes I read that it breaks my heart. Just think about what a great man Moses was. And he only got to stood up there and look over at the Canaan's land. And while the children of Israel, and the ones of the younger generation, went on. But listen to this. Here's our note. John chapter number 1, verse number 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Yeah. Praise God today. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Salvation came through by the Lord Jesus Christ. Through his shed blood. Through his atonement. Praise God. Let's stand today. Moses. He made a sort of right that the people of Christ who came to me. That, that bright speak of judgment. Uh, and on the cross, Jesus, he bore our judgment. Uh, the servant was not in effect with us. Mm. Jesus Christ was wicked as the world. Uh, and uh, he's still drawing today. Come to me. Come unto me. All you that labor in his name. And I will give you rest. I believe he's calling to the sinner today. Come unto me. Come unto me. I will give you rest. I will take your sin burden from you. And I will make you a Christian. Let's pray today. Father, in Jesus' name. I want to thank you today. I want to thank you for this time. God, I pray today for your word. That it will go out today. And it will go out. God, not only I can be for long, but God, the Lord help me, Jesus, this coming week, to be more of a light than the Lord will be in some time. And never head still bowed. I would like to ask you today, as you search your heart, if you do not know today that you've been born again, I would ask you to raise your hand. I want to pray for you. If there's anyone you do not know if you've been a poor I want to pray for you while we're not embarrassed anymore. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this time. I thank you for these folks. God, I pray that you bless them today. God, I pray that you bless us as we go out of these walls. And Lord, I pray today for the mighty working of the Holy Spirit. God, my prayer is that you will bless this church. God, that you will help this church. That God, that you will grow this church, that there'll be a mighty presence and power of your Holy Spirit here. Help us, God, as we go out. Help us, Lord, God, as we uh, will come back here Wednesday night to practice the Christmas play. Help us, God, next Sunday morning as we stand here to preach your word and to, uh, to learn more about you. And God, bless the play. Bless the Christmas play. We're so excited, God, about that time together. And about what it means. And God, I pray that you'll just fill this place up. And God, if there's one that comes in, Jesus, that don't know you, that it would be a good time, Lord, at that time for them to be saved. God, we pray that you'll be able to guide me and direct us. Give us to see your power and your fears. And what you do for us, Lord, 
we'll thank you, we'll praise you, and we'll sweet in your holy name. We do that with you. Amen. Amen. Anybody got a word?